Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this, the very solemn feast of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus, commonly known to so many as Corpus Christi Sunday. An opportunity for us to reflect on the blessings that God gives to us, especially in the Eucharistic feast. And of course, the mission that flows from that, that we are to be that body of Jesus for the sake of the world. Recognizing our sinfulness, we come today before the altar to be nourished. We seek also God's pardon and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with god the father the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever Amen. let us all be attentive to god's word A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, Remember the long way that the Lord our God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from a flat rock and fled you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The responsorial, responsorial psalm, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. 
Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends out his command to the earth. His words run swiftly. Praise Praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. Praise Praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise 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 the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless is not a sharing in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not a sharing in the body of Christ. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. from heaven, says the Lord, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. 
You know, when we think of that word, to abide, that is a beautiful hymn that very popular across all denominations, abide with me. You know, take refuge or take your comfort. Finding that sense of, of consolation and of peace. Always knowing that, you know, there is, there is someone there that, that is kind of looking after me. The recognition that, that I don't do things alone. I may find myself alone at certain times in my life, but I'm not a solitary island, as we say. The great song, folk song, says no man is an island and no man stands alone. And the passage that we have today in John's Gospel is one of those that, that is so remarkable and powerful in its witness to this idea of the God who, as we have just recently celebrated, the gift of Pentecost, the Spirit within. We have now Jesus saying, not only is it the Spirit that is within, but if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, I will abide in you. We know why, for many of the, the very, very conservative-minded Jewish people took issue with this, it was because they got stuck, not in the imagery, but they got stuck on what was a, a doctrinal point of the law. Because to consume the flesh of a human being was to make them unclean. And so Jesus uses this imagery which immediately then draws them into something which is beyond their own understanding. He speaks to us at a level which is that we not only consume him, in his whole totality in his being, but that he ends up consuming us. I think for all of us, we all remember our first communion. I remember it very well. I can even remember the suit that my mother made for me for my first communion. And the joy that there was and you know, most parishes, even to this day, they celebrate with the children to be invited to partake at the Lord's table is a great blessing. But when we fully understand, and I don't expect it, of children who are in grade two, because the mystery is too far above them. But when we, as adult people, understand what is that mystery that flows from this table? It can be, and I hate using the word again because I've been using it all Easter season, we are overwhelmed. We are overwhelmed because part of it is that I have to get my mind around my Jesus who died on a cross for me, who says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, lives in me, and I live in them. That something that is at a completely different level is happening when we process to the front and we receive the sacred body of our Lord. The body and the blood that we receive in the Eucharistic feast is not a static Reality, And what I mean by static is that it's not something that, that does not give life. It's not something that is without growth or without movement. The reality of our Eucharist is that it animates us in the same way that it animated the one who made the eternal sacrifice. 
It is the compelling force within us that says, if I take the body of my Lord in me, the flip side of that obligation is that I need to be the body of my Lord in the world, and that is where humanity struggles. You see, we can all get our mind around the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But do I accept the commission that if he lives and abides in me, that I must be his broken body for the world? Then I become scared. Then I begin to ask the question, but is that really what I'm wanting to get into? I don't mind the idea of Jesus making sacrifice for me. But making sacrifice for others. And as St. Paul would say, you know, it's easy, you know, to make the sacrifice for someone that you love. You know, if it's, the, if it's the little kids or the grandkids, it's easy to make sacrifice. But as St. Paul says, what, what if it's someone who is ungodly? That's where that tension is. To take the body that is broken, to take the cup that is spilled into myself, demands, it's not, it's not multiple choice, it demands of me a response of my very being. That my body must be broken and my blood must be spilled for the sake of the kingdom of God. And that's where many would walk away. I think that, that it was easier for some of the people to walk away because Jesus made this, what it's, some call a cannibalistic statement. It's not a cannibalistic statement. But the idea of taking the human flesh, it was easier to walk away from that than it was to wrestle with the idea that I too, in taking Jesus within me, must be broken for the world. This has already been revealed to us. I think of parents, young parents. You know what they, a two, a, a two month old baby has so much power. I ask the question, who really runs the world? Babies run the world. Babies cry and one of the parents runs after them. Most times, now I've heard this, I don't speak from experience, I have heard that 99.5% of the time it's the mother that runs to a crying child. And the child might need to be changed, the child might need to be fed, whatever it is, maybe whatever. Somebody runs for it. A child cries out in the middle of a night, not just an infant, but a child. What happens? The parents will go to see what it is that is wrong. They're breaking themselves. I mean, I, I lay awake so many times in the rectory. I wake up at night and I cry out. <laughs> and nobody runs for me. We've lived our lives continually being drawn into that sense of, of giving. When we volunteer our time, when we volunteer our efforts, how many times do we find creeping into the back of our mind little statements like, well, I could be doing something else. You know? Here I am visiting an elderly person. I could be planting the garden. Here I'm doing this, I could be home doing this. I'm running this errand. I'm doing these volunteer hours at the church, whatever. I'm doing this for the, 
for any kind of an organization or charity, I could be doing something else. And yet, it is that mystery that flows from this very altar that enlivens us to be that broken body. You know, it's not enough to be the voice of Jesus in the world. It's not enough to be the presence of Jesus in the world. If I have the courage to take him into me to the point that he says, I will abide in you, then I am committed to abiding in my brothers and sisters in a broken world, allowing myself to be broken just as he was broken. It's not, it's not something that, it's not a question that I ask my, it's not something that I say, well, I might want to do this or I may not want to do this. No, it's not about that. When he says, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will live in me and I will live in you. And if he lives in me and motivates me, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's going to call us to that moment. We can't escape it. And that is the great, the great challenge for us as Christians. That in taking within us that life-giving breath and that life-giving blood that I am given a whole new life because it is then that I stop living for myself and I start living for the ones he desires me to live for. You know, if we were asked a question, who do we most want to be like? You know, we ask kids that question, you know. What do you want to be when you grow up? Who do you want to emulate? You know, who can you, who would be a good person to imitate? And oftentimes the kids will come up with, with great, really, really great answers. Men and women who have just given of themselves. But today in this celebration, we are called to, to imitate and to emulate the one who broke his body for us. When I look on a when I look upon a world that, you know, is slowly, slowly becoming less and less connected to the ritualized form of worship. When I look upon a world that, that is struggling to uphold and define what is its moral compass, I have the ability to be able to shed a new light on any situation, and the reason being because when I let him in, he is here. My thought pattern since the celebration of Christmas has been one where I have continually come back to that, that line from Isaiah's prophecy, and the virgin will conceive and she will bear a son and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And from that, God with us is God's desire to be one with us. God's desire that we be with him. <laughs> and the question I ask today of Jesus. Humbly, Lord, I come to receive you but you really want to make your home in here? And you know what he says? Yes. 
Let me make my home in you so that I might live in you and you might have life everlasting. I think that's what I want. And I think back and with great gratitude, I think of the ones who, who fed me the body and the blood. I think of the catechists that, that instructed me, beginning with my parents. I think of all of the people who, who during my priesthood have been fed by the Eucharist. in more than probably somewhere coming to the neighborhood of 10,000 masses. I think of those priests who, who I, I can only hope to emulate, <laughs> and I'll never be as holy as they are. But the ones who believed in me, the ones who fed me, And they only desired one thing. It was the same thing as what Jesus desired. As I feed you, go feed my people. Go feed the world. Break your body. Spill your blood. Who else can say to us, that they will raise us on the last day. I want to be raised on the last day. And this food that we receive in this beautiful celebration of the Eucharist is the food that continues within me and within all of us to draw us ever closer to that promise. Let us be for one another, the Jesus that flows from this table and the great love that continues to flow from the heart of God himself. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are a pilgrim people fed and nourished by the Eucharist. We gather today with our needs, and in that spirit of trust, we offer them now to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father on earth, Pope Francis, our Bishop Mark, and all the ordained who daily feed us sacramentally with the body and blood of Jesus, that they be strengthened in their ministry and grow in their devotion to the heart of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of God, the body of Christ on earth, that they respond generously with the gifts of time and talent to bring the goodness of God into the lives of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience the brokenness of the body and blood of Christ, that they might be sustained and strengthened in their journey toward healing and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish youth, who today receive the First Holy Communion, 
that they might always live the promises revealed in the Holy Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of those who have died, that they now find the fullness of life, love, and peace in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of peace in our world, that united in the love of the body and blood of Christ, we might bring harmony and understanding to our families, community, and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather for the growing season, for moisture, sun, and heat to bring forth an abundant harvest of gardens and fields. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, it is right to give you thanks. It is right that we should reach out to you in our time of need. Hear your people as we cry out to you, and in your goodness grant to us what we ask. For we do so in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be the bread Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you. Through the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, I may call this to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Patrick, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, of the power, and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace out of you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant to our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant for what we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.